Hey guys, I'm LT from Blind Horse Knives, and today I'm here with Brad Stallsmith from Peter's Heat Treat. Hey Brad. How you doing? Good to see you, brother. Always good to have you around. So Brad, we've talked about hardness. Um, another part of the process is tempering. Uh, why don't you tell us about why it's important to temper your product? Okay, um, the tempering is actually the final step in the heat treating process. Um, it, it's done after you go through your initial hardening cycle, your quench, your cryogenics, then you go into what we call tempering. Um, tempering is a low temperature heat process. Um, it's generally a longer at, at a time process than the, than the hardening cycle or the cryogenics. Um, our normal standard tempers are at two hours at temperature. Um, for everything that has been cryoed, we will double temper during the heat treat process. And what that tempering does when you get done with the initial hardening and the cryogenic process, that steel is at its maximum hardness, but it's almost too hard at that point. If you did not temper it and you went to use that knife, it might hold a great edge for the longest time, but if you dropped it on the floor, it could shatter in pieces. Just because um, without tempering, the steel is in such a brittle state that um, it would be easy to chip or break. So what we're doing is we're just taking a little bit of that hardness off the top let's say for um, just for for giggles maybe 10 percent of the hardness off the top so as you get to full hardness then you temper you're taking just a little bit of that hardness off the top when you take that hardness off the top it also adds uh, toughness so you're always trying to balance with your tempering and your heat treat process in total but in tempering you're always trying to balance that um, that uh, hardness versus toughness mm -hmm. okay and with tempering you can usually get that to a nice little balance in there for whatever your knife application right. is if you need a little bit more wearability you want your knife to be a little bit harder because you don't want to have to sharpen it as often you're going to want to temper just a little bit less and when i say a little bit less usually that means just a lower temperature okay if you want to in the case of uh, you know we found out with the with the pathfinder knife and the scandy grind we were a little bit hard on those initial things and you were getting some chipping so at that point we added um, we, we increased the tempering temperature a little bit by 100 150 degrees and that took a little bit of hardness off the top and mm -hmm. added that toughness that you're looking for so the tempering is just a heating process that is used to adjust your final hardness now, the number of tempers you mentioned earlier, um, anything you cry or you generally double temper? Absolutely. Is, is there a, a, a rule that you three, four tempers? I mean, um, how does that work? You're, what, you're, what you're actually trying to do, and, and I'm going to jump up into some, some uh, heat treat words here. You're actually trying to um, get rid of what they call retained austenite, which is an undesirable grain structure formation that happens during the heat treating process. So the, the cryogenic process helped get rid of that retained austenite. You're actually ch changing that austenite, which is a grain structure in steel, to what they call martensite. Austenite's bad, martensite is good. Mm -hmm. So the, the cryogenic process and the tempering processes will reduce that retained austenite and change it into tempered martensite. Um, that being said, that's that grain structure that we talked about earlier. Um, as far as with the cryogenics and that goes. Brad, what is the, the reason for doing multiple tempers on a, on a knife? Okay, um, tempering, tempering is actually done to uh, reduce the retained austenite, changing it into martensite, the most desirable grain structure for a piece of steel. Um, the, the more that you temper, the, the, the more you can transform that. Um, you get to a point of diminishing returns. Um, you can multiple temper. You can temper four or five times, but those last three or four times that you're tempering, you're really not gaining much. Mm -hmm. So most of the uh, desirable grain structure transformation that you're looking for can be accomplished with um, two tempers combined with a cryogenic treatment. Some very high alloy steels, like what they call the high-speed steels, the M-series steels and the T-series steels, require even more tempering uh, cycles just because of the mass quantity of alloy that they have in there. So the higher your steel is alloyed, the more tempering that you have to do. But in a real scheme of things, 
three tempers combined with a cryo treatment is really about the Cadillac heat treatment that you could get. Great.